the scripture today is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed and uh, with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. So he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the other went out to find him. When they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, We must go on to other towns as well, and I will preach to them, too. That's why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. The sermon today is entitled, Welcoming a Changed World, and will be delivered by Pastor Lakis. Good morning, everyone. The grace and peace of Christ be with all of us today. As Christians, I think we might have to accept that to many people today, Jesus seems a little bit boring. I don't mean that I find Jesus boring, I don't at all, but I can understand why, especially to many young people, the stories about Jesus, the stories about his life and work may not seem so exciting or interesting. I think if Jesus was a character in a video game, I'm not sure if many people would choose him to play. I don't think his game statistics would be very good. Jesus' strength rating would probably be low. I don't think he would punch well. And I don't think that Jesus could do a combination super jump punch or a hit stun to defeat his enemies. He isn't exactly the type of hero that we admire today. Instead, today, we want our heroes to have something more. To wear a cape, to save a princess, to do great deeds, and impress us with flashy powers. Compared to these great heroes that fill our movies and fill our video games, well, Jesus just seems a bit ordinary. This isn't a new problem. It's not a new problem at all. Even by the standards of the ancient world, Jesus didn't count as much of a hero. If you wanted to see great heroes, you just needed to look at ancient Greece. The culture and religion of the Greeks were full of stories of great men. People like Odysseus, Perseus, and Hercules. People who were skilled in fighting. People who flew around on winged horses and used their superhuman strength to defeat and kill their enemies. Those ancient heroes, they battled against fierce monsters like the one-eyed Cyclops, the Hydra with its many snake heads, or the frightening Medusa who would turn people to stone if they looked at her. These are exciting stories, exciting stories that fired up people's imaginations and have fascinated people for thousands of years. In comparison to Hercules, the Jesus we see in today's Bible reading just doesn't look very impressive. Hercules is on an epic adventure, fighting off monsters. Jesus is just helping Peter's mother-in-law recover from a fever, something that we can all do today with a 30 NT packet of paracetamol or aspirin from the supermarket. Somehow that just doesn't seem so exciting. 
It doesn't seem very heroic to us. The ancient Greek hero cult, with all of its monsters, with all of its stories, they still fascinate people today because those stories and those heroes really are exciting. But the problem with this excitement, the problem with great Olympian hero culture, is that it comes with a huge cost, a dangerous cost. All of us here today, we know that our world is full of immense problems. We watch the news and problems seem to be the only thing that we see. We watch the news and we see in the Middle East how countries are at war, destroying the lives of millions of innocent people. We watch as refugees desperately search for safety in new places. In North Africa, we see people chained up and being sold off as slaves. Across India and Asia, we see young children being pulled into the sex trade and having their lives destroyed. Across China and Taiwan, industries use up our natural resources and lead us, leave us with polluted and deadly air and water. And in so many countries, we watch as thousands of children die every day of simple, preventable diseases. We all know that our world has problems. We know that. We all know that our world is in desperate need of change. We all know that on all sides, we're surrounded by challenges and disasters. So how do we face those challenges? How do we fight back against war and crime and injustice? Well, movies and popular culture tell us that we need a superhero. We need a superhero. Hero culture, from the days of Hercules in ancient Greece to Superman today, hero culture tells us that our hope for this world lies in the hands of the great and powerful. Our hope is in caped crusaders, mighty warriors, and wonder women. It's these great individuals and only these great and powerful heroes who can stand in the way of injustice, who can fight back against evil, and who can defeat the monsters of this world. And that's the harmful idea. That's the harmful and dangerous idea that hero culture sells to us. Because where are these superheroes? Where are our superheroes? All of us here are just ordinary people. That's the danger that hero culture brings. Hero culture divides the world into two, into heroes and normal people, into incredibles and ordinaries, into the magical and the muggle. Then hero culture convinces us that there's nothing, nothing at all that we ordinary people can do. The world is full of problems. The world is falling apart. But it's only the great hero who can stop it. That's what we're told. The problem when we believe that, though, when we really believe that heroes must save the world, is that we look at ourselves in the mirror and we see that we aren't superheroes. And so we walk away. We tell ourselves that, well, we just don't have the power to change the world. After all, we aren't super strong, we don't have special abilities. We don't even own a cape. Hero culture tells us that the world can only change through the mighty and heroic actions of the great and powerful, through great deeds that other people would want to make movies about. But the result of that idea is that it just leaves us overwhelmed. It leaves us feeling hopeless because none of us, none of us are really superheroes. And so we look at evil, we feel upset by it, but then we just shrug our shoulders and move on. After all, what can ordinary people like us do? Today, movies and popular culture are flooded with superheroes. And yet in the real world, we are drowning in hopelessness and despair. Over the last few years, it's been interesting and a little worrying too to look at statistics from the US and the UK on the number of people turning out to vote in their elections. For example, in America's 2016 presidential election, about half of registered voters didn't participate. 
And it was the lowest voter turnout in around 20 years. It was especially worrying to see that many young people didn't go to vote. In the UK, we saw a similar situation. When they had the Brexit vote to decide whether the UK would leave Europe, 64% of young people didn't even bother to turn up, didn't even bother to vote. It was interesting to listen to people after these elections and to listen to them talk about their hopelessness and their feelings of pessimism. They felt like no matter what was going on in the world, no matter what big challenges needed to be faced, they just felt like there was nothing they could do about it anyway. They felt like they didn't count, like they didn't have the ability to change anything, didn't have the ability to really do anything. So in that case, why bother? Why bother even turning up? Why bother even trying? If it's only great heroes, if it's only the strong and powerful who make a difference to the world, and if we aren't strong and powerful, if we aren't superheroes, then why even bother trying? Given this atmosphere, it's not surprising then that when we come to today's Bible story, on the surface, on the surface, it seems so boring, it seems so unimportant. It almost makes us wonder why Mark even bothered to write this story down for us. It just seems so ordinary. Jesus walks over to Peter's home, and when he gets there, he finds that Peter's mother-in-law is sick, in bed with a fever. Jesus goes to her bedside, takes her by the hand, and helps her sit up. And then the fever left her. This story doesn't seem very special. It doesn't seem very heroic to us. Jesus doesn't fight a three-headed monster. He doesn't lead an army into battle here. He simply sits at someone's bedside, holds her by the hand, and helps her fever go away. But here, here in these little, little actions, Jesus teaches us something incredibly important. Jesus shows us the power that we can find in these little acts of love. What Jesus shows us is that hero culture is wrong. You don't need to be great to make a great change. You don't need to be a hero to make the world a better place. Of course, to us, we know that Jesus is special. We Christians, we know that Jesus is special. But to almost everyone who surrounded Jesus during his lifetime, Jesus wasn't special at all. Jesus didn't walk around Judea with a bright, shining halo around his head. To most people, he was just a random person in the crowd. When we read the gospel stories, we find that Jesus' own family didn't think much of him, didn't think that he was particularly special. The religious leaders and the people from Jesus' own hometown looked at him as what he was, just an ordinary handyman from Nazareth. Even at the end of the story in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the soldiers come to arrest Jesus, they needed Judas to give them a sign so they could identify Jesus, so they could know who Jesus was. Without Judas's kiss, they wouldn't even have known which person in the crowd was Jesus. Jesus wasn't a great Greek hero. He wasn't a mighty and muscular person who rode around on a cloud and held thunderbolts in his hands. He didn't even stand out much in a crowd. In most people's eyes, Jesus was a nobody, an unremarkable and ordinary person. And yet there's no one else in all of history, no one else in the whole of human history who has changed the world as much as Jesus has. This year, we say this year is 2018, 2018 years since the birth of Jesus. And yet, how did it happen that so much of the world changed the way they counted time to mark the birth of this ordinary carpenter from Judea? Jesus' life and work changed Western culture forever. And it spread out worldwide to touch and transform people and nations on every continent. And today, over a third of the population of the world count themselves as followers of Jesus. 
together making up the largest religion on earth. Jesus is often described in lots of different ways. Sometimes we hear him described as a revolutionary, as someone who changed the world forever, as a great leader. And each of those descriptions is right in its own way. But how did Jesus manage all of this? How did Jesus turn the world upside down? He didn't do it by leading an army. He didn't do it by running for political office or making himself an earthly emperor or king. He didn't do it through wealth or riches. Instead, Jesus changed the world, not with great and flashy displays of power, not with his muscles either. Jesus changed the world with tiny, tiny little actions of love and care for others. This is something we should really never forget. When Jesus described the kingdom of God, notice how Jesus never said that the kingdom is like a mighty hero. He never said the kingdom is like a fierce warrior. Jesus never said that the kingdom of God is flashy, attention-grabbing, or created by strong men wearing capes. No, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is tiny and invisible, like yeast that's mixed into dough, or like a mustard seed that vanishes into the dust on the ground. They may look like nothing. They may look unimpressive and unimportant. But just watch how they grow. A tiny bit of invisible yeast spreads through the dough and makes the whole loaf rise. And it's our tiny little acts of love and kindness that spread through this world and change it. These tiny little actions seem so unimportant. They seem so insignificant. They don't seem very heroic to us at all. But it's here, it's here in these little actions that we find true and amazing change happening. We see that in Jesus' own life, in his own life and work. Jesus came and changed our lives and our world forever. And yet he didn't do that as a great hero. Instead, Jesus did that by doing something that heroes rarely do which is to actually care about us and take an interest in our lives. Great people and political leaders work at the top levels of society, and there at the top, they very rarely have time to look down at where we are, to look down at our ordinary lives and take an interest in them. But when we look at Jesus, we see the opposite. We see someone who is willing to come close to us, to take us by the hand, to understand the problems and the pain that we are facing right now and to help us overcome them. Whatever the fever in our own lives may be, whatever it is that's making us sick in our hearts today, Jesus comes to our bedside to care for us. He listens to us. He interests himself in our personal problems, no matter how small they may be, no matter how insignificant they may seem. Whether it's homework, whether it's stress about our jobs, whether it's heartbreak that comes from our relationships, or simply worry about what tomorrow might bring. Jesus cares about what we are going through. And he comes, he takes us by the hand, and he lets us know that he is here with us. It doesn't sound heroic, perhaps. It doesn't sound like it's very much at all. But isn't that what we all so desperately need? Just to have someone who's willing to listen, someone who's willing to care about what we are going through, someone who is there ready to help. Jesus came to care for us and to heal us. And when people in Peter's hometown found out that someone had come who really cared about these little things, who really took a personal interest in the problems of their ordinary lives, they flocked to Jesus, crowding around him and even surrounding Peter's home. That's how powerful love and personal care can be. So where is it that we see God's kingdom? Where do we see the world really changing? Despite what movies and hero culture tell us, 
It's not in great actions or heroic deeds, but it's in tiny, humble acts of love. That's where we see change. That's where we see God's kingdom. Those little acts, they seem so unimportant. They hardly look very impressive at all. But it's those little actions, those little mustard seeds, those little specks of yeast. That's what grows and changes our world. That's what changes our world for the better. Last Sunday, our homeless ministry team did something that many people in the world might say was useless and unimportant. They went out to give food to the hungry and chat with people living alone on the streets. That outreach didn't make the newspapers. No one reported about it on TV. In a world full of big events, those little acts of love and kindness hardly seemed important, hardly seemed to register at all. But in those little actions, in those personal actions of closeness and care, that's where we see the kingdom of God really growing and really spreading. That's where we see the world truly changing for the better. Hero culture tells us that it's only the great and powerful who can face the world's problems. But all that does is to push us down, to convince us that we aren't heroes, and so tell us that, There's nothing that we can do. But that's not true at all. That's really not true at all. Yes, there are great powers for darkness and evil in this world. There truly are forces that promote chaos and suffering. But we don't need to be superheroes to stand against that. And we don't need to give in to hopelessness. We don't need to give in to pessimism. Because despite those problems, there's an even greater power in this world. A power for goodness and change. A power for healing and transformation. It's not a power that's reserved for superheroes. It's not a power that only comes with a cape, a sword and bulging muscles. It's a power that each of us has brought with us today. It's a power that God has placed in our own hands. A power to reach out to those around us even in the tiniest of ways. It's a power to use our hands to spread compassion, goodness, and love. It's a power that Jesus calls us to use today as his disciples. Because we don't need to be heroes to face the evils in this world. We just need to reach out to one another in love. Let's pray together. Our Lord Christ, no matter what the fever in our life may be, no matter what problem pulls us down and troubles our heart, you are always here for us. You reach out to us, you take us by the hand and you lift us up. Help us now to follow in your footsteps and do the same. Give us the bravery not to be superheroes, but simply to reach out to others in a spirit of compassion and care. Help us to be salt and light for this world. And through our hands, may your kingdom grow. In your holy name we pray. Amen.